Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani. It is Sunday, May of May. You hear me? <laughs> September 5th. Oh my God, already the 5th day of September. We just turned the corner. Um, getting ready to transition from summer to fall. Already having cool nights. I've turned off my AC. I've turned everything off. No need. I love this time of year because of that. Um, and I love the fall. That's like my favorite season season of the year. What's your favorite season? Let me know. And uh, what are your favorite things to do? Let me tell you something. I like the summer. I really do. Um, being from New York and growing up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, uh, I had the beach, you know, I had the bay, I had the, the pier where I would go fishing. And so the summer was beautiful there because it was an open area where you got open breeze. Um, but when you're in states that are not surrounded by um, all of that, <laughs> Like in Kentucky, uh, we do have the rivers and lakes, you know. But uh, when you don't have that open ocean air, you know, flowing through, and then you have the bay on the other side, and just that cross ventilation going, you know, the heat can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Um, Especially when you have illnesses, you know, you're hard to breathe and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I, I love the summer. I really do. Um, but fall has always something about the view, you know, the leaves turning orange. And it's just so, for me, it's a, a season of peace, you know, and also reflection. Um, and I just love the fall. I really do. It's like the perfect weather for me. But anyway, so um, it's Sunday, September the 5th, and it's 11.22 in the morning. Uh, 11.23 now. <laughs> and I am going to demonstrate one of my... My, my days, I mean, this is a typical day for me, okay? And this is uh, with dialysis, after doing or before doing dialysis, depending on what I got going on. Um, I This is how I make a complete meal from start to finish. I'm talking about from fresh baked bread to dessert, you know, to pies, cakes, whatever, okay? So... Here's what's on the menu for today. It's 11.23 now, remember. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my dough seasoned, okay? Because the best thing you do actually is when you're on my kind of schedule and you have an added that takes about three to four hours of your time daily, uh, five days a week, like dialysis, then uh, you have to start the day before, the night before, before you go to bed. Go ahead and do your prep work as much as you can get done. And that way the next day just goes smooth. Okay, as smooth as possible, that is. Okay, so the first thing I do is I start off with the dough. Now, this dough has already been proved and everything else. And what I all I'm going to do with this dough is just, uh, and I'm going to make a long loaf. It's just... Um, it's like clay almost. You smell the yeast. It's just wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my seasoning to this with clean hands, of course. And my seasoning, because Hubster likes it very seasoning. I really just like salt in my dough. But Hubster likes his, you know, with garlic and basil and so I have, um, I have salt in there already. So I'm going to put some basil. Okay. And we'll work it into the dough. Okay. Okay. 
And then here's garlic onion powder. Okay, it's a mix. I always combine those two. Okay, he likes it very garlicky. Alright, so there's that. And let's see what else. We're going to add some parsley, of course. The no flavor spice. <laughs> Aromatic, in a way. Um, cilantro, definitely. Okay. Put a little bit of Parmesan. Okay. Grated cheese. Hold on a tablespoon. Alright, now I have, um, I still have a loaf, uh, a part of a Tuscan artisan loaf. Uh, so I'm only using the a small amount of dough and this is about maybe a cup and a half okay so anyway and this is this one has zero this is zero zero flour and this is what I have made uh, for the calzone and the pizza but what I did was um, I made like, I think it was five cups. So, which meant that I had sufficient dough left over for more dishes. And I made pizza, I mean, I made a margarita, and then I made uh, calzones, and now I'm making with the rest of this, which is about a cup and a half left, I'm gonna make this bread, okay? She's still cold. I just took her out the fridge. So, but I'm gonna let her warm up, and I just want her to warm up with all the seasonings. Okay. We've got this all incorporated in the dough, and we're gonna let her rest. Okay. Warm up. At least a couple of hours. So remember, make your dough the night before. All right, sorry, that was Hubster at the door telling me he he was done planting our uh, the two crab apple trees that he bought. Did I tell you all what happened in my yard? <laughs> it was um. When was it? Whenever the kids went back to school, I can't remember the date. Well, anyway, that Sunday before, I threw a uh, uh, back to school, end of summer back to school uh, swimming barbecue party for the kids. Okay? And uh, while we're up on the deck and we're all sitting, the kids were in the pool and we're all up on the deck watching them and talking. The men were cleaning their weapons on the table and on the picnic table and all that. And just a beautiful gathering and a beautiful Sunday. We had beautiful weather. And uh, all of a sudden, we have a tree line right behind the pit, the barbecue pit that my husband, that helps her built, um, which is straight across from the pool and then there's the tree line and there was the shed well this <laughs> they were doing some <clears throat> landscaping work I guess cutting down trees uh, because they had that landlord had not developed his backyard when we bought our house we didn't have a backyard because it's a hill it's a direct hill and it came down to about Three feet from the old deck, which was a small, tiny little deck and stairs leading out to it. But there was nothing there. There was no yard you can put anything on, down on or anything, because it was all hill. And it was a, it's a steep hill. 
Well, the neighbor next door never did cut down the trees. We did. We we cut down the little trees um, <clears throat> that were all, and we cleared the area, in other words. And, uh, of course, the wood gets donated, and so it's put to good use for building houses, habitat for humanity, and stuff like that. But anyway... <clears throat> So we cleared our yard and then Huffster dug into the hill and he put a retaining wall and he put a flat, so he flattened out. He gave us a nice area and then he built the deck in the pool and, and then in front of that he built the barbecue pit. You know, work in progress kind of thing. So we had a line of trees on our property that gave us privacy, which is why we Put the pool facing that way as opposed to facing the other way but anyway so we're sitting having a good time and right through the <laughs> right through the line of trees comes this worker who was working for the landscaping crew or the tree cutting crew whatever the business was and he comes right through he cut he cut our tree line, our privacy tree line. He cut our trees down, you all. Sure did came right through a big old open <laughs> space that we all looked. And he were looking at this man with the saw. And nothing but a big gaping hole. I mean, at least six feet wide. I mean, he just like, he came through. And we just all looked. And my husband, uh, <laughs> I could tell that he just wanted to go to another level. <laughs> he wanted to go off on that. So I looked at him, and um, my son was present, and he, he saw it too, and so he automatically tries to calm things down by saying, oh, I don't think that was your tree line. I think that was on their property and blah, 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 trying to calm him down. But we knew better. We know where our tree line, where our property line is. We know where ours is and, and, and where it ends on both sides. That's one thing we do know. But anyway, he, we stood quiet. We didn't say nothing. We continued on until the guests left. And then when the guests left, that's when Hubster went next door, found the owner of that business, and gave him a good talking to. I mean, you would think, if you have a, a business like that, you have a professional business like that, that you would do your homework. You would ask the landlord, okay, where does your, you know, do you do a walkthrough and with a can of paint or orange flags or bags or whatever? You know, you do a walkthrough and you mark the area. You mark where, and it's the landlord's fault too now. But you got two entities that are professional businessmen or people, and neither one of them paid attention to what they were supposed to pay attention to. Neither one of them did that homework. According to the tree cutting guy, owner, he said that the landlord just told him, oh, just cut everything down in the back. Well, everything on your property is what I wanted to say. I mean, seriously? <laughs> well, you were going to keep going to, every, to the whole neighborhood? But anyway, I didn't say anything. I just held my tongue. I didn't say a word, and Hubster didn't either, but Hubster did show him where the property line was, and he uh, told him that for this area, I think the standard was 14, um, feet from the end of the house, you know, but anyway, here, here it is. So immediately I got online, and I... We didn't do anything like everyone was saying, oh, you all, because I videotaped it. I sure did. And everyone, just in case it gets there, you know, we we have our story to tell on film. But 
um, we didn't contact the landlord, I mean, the owner of the property. We didn't do any of that. We didn't pursue anything with the tree cutting people. We didn't try to do all that. We, we try to forgive, you know, and give them the opportunity to own up to what they've done and come to us on their own. You know, it's a Christian way. And if they don't, fine. Then, well, we had to do our iron to prevent this from happening again. We went ahead. I got online and I ordered a, I ordered a fence, a material fence um, that was like seven feet in height and 150 feet in length, I think it was. Or maybe, yeah. Anyway, so because... We, we decided to go ahead and from where he stopped all the way down to the corner of the front of the house and then towards the house. So we decided to enclose all that and put the fence up. So then he got the fence and I got the fence, the material fence, and my husband got the metal fence. But we're putting up a wood privacy fence. But that was just for an immediate enclosure and privacy thing. Because when we have guests over, we don't want anyone looking in. And it makes people feel uncomfortable, you know, some people. So, we plus, we like our privacy. This is our little, you know, uh, oasis, you know, Devani Oasis, David and Ani Oasis. Uh, and and just our little nest in the world and and we want to be private about it you know and uh anyway which is our prerogative which is our you know choice to do and our right to do we actually you know own the property but anyway so we enclosed all of that that was the first thing we did as soon as i got that stuff in the mail uh uh, we had Hubster went ahead and put the, dug the poles in. He did 12 foot poles because we were, were going to add on. Um, like once we put the wooden fence up all the way around, we're going to do the material fence. What is that? Five feet more. You see what I'm saying? Because because of the deck and the height, you can still see into the neighbor's yard without those trees being there, which means they can still see into ours. <sighs> but long story short, we got uh, to replace the trees <laughs> that the man cut down, the laborer, and he didn't know anybody. He was just a helper. Um, he should have been instructed better than what he was, though. You know what I mean? But anyway, so we decided to plant. We had to buy trees and replant. So we got um, we got some hedges, uh, tall growing hedges and uh, some trees. And then um, he just recently bought two crab apple trees. But we're not putting them on the tree line. These are going to be on our yard because if we were to put that on a tree line and they, somebody was to cut those, woo Yeah, so we tried to deter <laughs> from creating that temptation, <laughs> you know, onto others. So, yeah, so we went ahead and did that. So he's over here. He went ahead and planted them in the ground. They're pretty tall, and we should have fruit. In about two years, because they're they're not little uh, seedlings or saplings. They're big already, so you know we should get fruit in a couple of years. I'm hoping. But anyway, that was the story, and I'll see about including the video <laughs> um, of, of the day that that was done and how quickly Hubster started. Uh, hammering uh, the rods in for a fence. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah.
things you do when there's people around you know these things happen not everybody has the same gifts of love which you know compassion thoughtfulness kindness and all that uh so you have to really be uh an example lead by example so we thought we did that and but it does still make you upset, you know. It does still upset. It's still an upsetting situation. And we're only humans, so, yeah. We did get a little upset, and we were a little upset for that. Then we prayed about it. I mean, we prayed about it right away, but we really prayed about it. And, you know, finally we received the peace we needed, and we knew what we had to do. And, and so now we're beyond it. And the thing is, is that, you know what the enemy means for evil? God makes it for our good because now we have, he moved the shed in order to get that fence into the other side of the house, of the yard. And now we have so much more room on that side that we're going to use it for the Feast of Tabs, you know, Tabernacles. The tent will so fit perfect. It'll be private and um instead of out in the open that we usually have it on the other side of the house where the shed is now so like i said what the enemy meant for evil in faith and through prayer and supplication patience and the practice of yahweh's spiritual garments you know God, grace upon grace, he'll bless us, and his beauty for our ashes, he'll give us. So, yeah, he did that for us. And let me tell you something else that happened. Um, he moved the shed. There, was, there were no, uh, because the shed was in front of the barbecue pit, you know, he had laid down gravel and all that. He had settled that foundation and um, hammered it down flat and put all his uh, blocks in and blah, blah, blah. Well, there were, there was nothing growing there behind the shed, in between the shed and the bench, the, the barbecue pit bench, um, at all. And he moved the shed. And when we come back to go to the other side, because he had to now fix that ground, um, there, right there, in the center, right behind, right in front of the pit, where the shed was, or started, where the start of the shed, the, of the back of the shed started, was... A little tree about I would say six feet high it came out of nowhere so we looked so was that there before and Harpster was like no it I just turned around and there it was so either it was growing late on the ground underneath the shed because there was some space you know, and um, and then just popped up, you know, once the shed was moved. But it was beautiful. It was green. It's beautiful. And I said, hon, God gave us a tree. Isn't that something? It just stood there like just out of nowhere all by itself with nothing around it just right in the middle it was amazing i said god gave us a tree honey for the one that was taken for one of the ones that was taken it's our turn to do the rest so we did and he got uh, some more stuff and more trees and bushes and stuff like that and so we're filling up the area and He's getting working on getting the fence done. He's right now he's clearing out the ground, flattening it out. He already mudded everything and he's putting gravel down. 
he already put the topsoil and all that and I, he's putting some um, gravel down today and planting the last two trees we purchased which was the crab apple tree but that's our story <laughs> I'm telling you I'm telling you never dull moment so we have our dough bowl here we're gonna just leave it in the container um, for a couple of hours okay I'll put that to the side this is how I start my day okay it is now 1146 here I have I'm gonna make a blueberry pie I'm gonna use the store board bought pie crust these are delicious it's great value brand is just as good you see how flaky that is you need to roll it out and add butter fold it put it in the refrigerator for about 20 30 minutes bring it out roll it out again and uh, more butter put it back in for another half hour and you'll get that flaky crust I mean it's already flaky to begin with but I like it really flaky and puffy and butter helps it do that and layering the dough you know I and I got two cans of the great value blueberry the Duncan Heinz is it carries a lot more blueberries, but I always buy the frozen, the fresh frozen blueberries. And when I cook this down, you know, uh, to thicken it, uh, I add the fresh frozen blueberries to it so it's nice and thick. And then, of course, the cornstarch that I'm going to need to uh, condense that. Okay? And there's my pie plate. Okay, deep dish. 10 inch so the only thing really I have to do here uh, is what I explained with the crust okay and get this to reduce down to a nice jam like consistency and then last night I took three zucchinis okay and I ran them through my there you go my grater uh, this end You can use a knife and do perfect little round circles, but what I'm gonna do is uh, After I fry these okay season and fry them And brown them. I'm gonna chop them up into little pieces because this is gonna be mixed with uh, pasta spaghetti and I don't like big chunks of zucchini with my spaghetti I like them little so that's why I went ahead and used a grater instead of slicing the perfect little circles um, and you want the skin on it's healthier okay but also it holds it together the zucchini itself it doesn't disintegrate or fall apart on you hold on a second Oof, had to go away and sneeze okay and then here to serve with the pasta al merano, okay, an Italian style pasta dish. Last night I went ahead and seasoned, marinated, okay, uh, two flank, flat iron, uh, flat iron, uh, flank steaks, flat steaks <laughs> okay and then of course here's the spaghetti the pasta for the pasta nerano um, and that's it I mean that's gonna be the salad the regular tossed salad is already made so I usually make that um, on Saturdays I make a fresh batch and make all the pasta because I mean pasta Salad because Hubster eats salad every day. And you see here it is. It's got to be tossed around some. Everything usually settles on the bottom because he'll get in there and start digging, you know. Let's see. I'll just go ahead and toss it. Carrots, radishes, uh, celery, broccoli. And he'll go in there and he'll pick out all the broccoli and, <laughs> you know. 
Yeah. Instead of just putting a scoop in a bowl. All right, so we've got that going on, folks. And again, we're going to have the bread, the main dish, and the dessert, and of course, salad. And that was a spring spinach mix. That's what that was. And I got the... These were advertised on Facebook. And it took me a while to decide on trying it out. It's called a Flip Diamond Skillet. Check out the inside. It sears it. Like it's been on a grill, okay? And you can flip it once you you uh, sear it, right? You take it and you flip it and you use this side to cook it the rest of the way. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I love this pan. Great, great for steaks. Okay, so that's it. I'm getting ready to start. And what I'm going to do next is roll out the pasta dough, put some butter on it, fold it, and put it in the fridge. Cover it and put it in the fridge, right? Shower cap it. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so only one of these is going to get uh, buttered and folded and flaky because the bottom one, I don't do that to. Okay, I like a solid crust on the bottom. And a flaky on the top. That's just my preference. I mean, you do what you like. Okay. So, we've got our dough here open. Let's get our pan. Okay. Let's get the butter right here. I'm going to use a, a spoon. Alright, so just going to roll it out some so I can relax. like that real simple take some room temperature butter okay. and you just spread that butter on can you all see what I'm doing probably not because I always forget here we go I act like I got a film crew. <laughs> yeah. No, honey, you are the film crew. You gotta turn your own camera. <laughs> That's all in good fun. Uh, okay. Alright. So. Then what we're going to do is one third of the way. Bring the other half in. Butter on this side. I don't know what this is. Bring it in like this. And bring it in like that. Okay. We're going to use the same wrapper it came in that you split down the middle. And we're just going to cover it like this. If you 
guys haven't started using shower caps, I'm telling you, it saves money on slam wrap and cling wrap and all that. Uh, it's wonderful. Okay. And you can reuse it. If, you know, you can rinse them out and reuse them. And they're on Amazon. And I don't know, you get a bag. Oh, I can't remember. Maybe about a hundred of them for mm, five, six dollars, maybe. But and they got different sizes. They got the regular size, and then they got large. I think they have extra large too. So for bigger dishes, like casserole dishes and stuff. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. I can go ahead and get my this ready. Let me go ahead and. Wipe this down and then spray it with butter. Why don't I just use that little butter? Since I have it out. Okay. Okay. So, go ahead and do that. Well buttered, so it doesn't stick. All right, that's done. Okay, once again, you don't need any extra flour or anything. It's got like a light coating of flour on it. So you don't need to do any of that. As you can see, it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. So you're going to stretch out the dough. Like so. Okay. Bring in a pie plate. And just uh, Just let it settle in very gently. So let me tell you something about, <laughs> you know, I was uh, walking around with ankle weights and stuff like that because if they should call me for a transplant, which it won't be any time soon, I'm thinking next year. They haven't even tested Hufster yet. But they sent him the application, and he filled it out and sent it back in, and they haven't called him yet to come in for testing. But we're hopeful and prayerful. And uh, so I'm figuring, okay, i got about a year. i, I got to try to get my body in the best shape possible for a transplant, you know, so I can come out of it, first of all, alive and in a good condition. To be able to recover better you know so i decided to go ahead and start wrapping around some weights around my ankle my wrist and yeah well my body said no you ain't doing that it kind of dislocated my on my left leg and uh 
Now and then I started uh, getting it started getting painful to walk. I started feeling bone on bone rubbing around my hip and groin area, and it was so painful. So the doctor ordered an X-ray for my left hip. In the meantime, I stopped putting the weights around it. And guess what? It alleviated. It's, yep. A, f a few days later, it started fe feeling better, and now it doesn't hurt when I walk. Yep, and then with the wrist weights, you know, I have my fistula right here on this arm. So with the wrist weights on my arms, my left arm, I don't know what it was doing to the fistula, but you want to talk about some serious cramping. So I stopped that too. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah, it, that's what it is. That's what the life is like when... You have kidney failure, you know, what works. Everything is outside of the norm. Everything, as far, as far as your body function and reaction to things. Okay, so I've got that down. Watch what I'm going to do. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and... Brush on. Some butter. Then we're going to deck. Just take a fork. to put my shower cap on it and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, put it in the fridge. Until we're ready for it, let me go ahead and Feed Boots, it's 12, and I'll be right back, and we'll go ahead and put the blueberries to a low simmer to condense it. I'll be back. Okay, now, moving on to, this is just enough butter for this. That'll give it a nice glaze. I know people put it in at towards the end. I like to put it in whenever I feel like it. <laughs> and now, I want it to get nice and frothy. The butter, that is. I got it on a number eight. I'm gonna put it on high just to get it going real quick. I'm gonna open, while I open my cans up, I gotta get my blueberries. Okay, this out the way. We're gonna fry the zucchini after this. All right, I hear the sizzling, so I'm gonna lower this to a number three because again, we want this to simmer. Okay, got my. Frozen. You ready? Okay. 
This can create some water, liquid. That's why I put them in first. Okay. Get the rest of the butter off of this brush, silicone brush. Nothing goes to waste. And get a spoon. Get this out. There's one can. Down. Now for a second, let me start this. See, a lot more blueberries. I don't know if you can see. Adobo. Black pepper. Normally on this dish you don't it's really season. I mean, I haven't seen anybody season it, but I haven't heard of it. That's okay. I'm going to season it. Because I'm Puerto Rican and I like my seasoning. Uh, it's so does a hamster. He, <laughs> he really loves his. Put just a little bit of garlic powder. Mm -hmm. 
Is it a sprinkle? Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Here we go. Alright, so I got that going. Alright. batches. They'll separate. The oil will help them separate. I'm going to raise this to a five. Get this into a good simmer, then I'll lower it back down. And I don't add any additional sugars. First of all, sugar will create even more liquid, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Even though it is good, I will add some, a squeeze of lemon. that I'm featuring in this uh, meal from start to finish video is the pasta uh, Nerano, which is the zucchini pasta. Okay, just so you all know. But that is what I'm featuring. Just let them get golden brown. Let that fry down. I'll bring you back. Okay, so go ahead. Let's go ahead and make the swirl for the blueberries. Another thing about slicing them like this is that they'll get, they'll shrink. You see, these are the, this is the first batch. They'll shrink on their own. Absolutely. Mm, delicious. We're going to go ahead and take three tablespoons of cornstarch. One, two, three. just going to mix it up. It'll dissolve. Just keep pushing it around. 
It'll unstick from the bottom. There we go. And it'll dissolve. No lumps. Okay. And we're going to want to pour that in. Two. Our blueberries. And mix it right on in there. And you'll see it thicken. I have before your very eyes. And the color will come back. It'll look a little red first, but then it comes back and darkens again. So I'm going to take my zucchinis out. See, it's starting to get dark again. So I'm just going to take that off the heat and let that sit and cool off. Just about ready. Turn this burner off. thinking about adding mushrooms to this. So, we've got that going on. Then we have our steak, which I'm leaving out to rest in the seasoning. And it is 1257. Pretty much, maybe I can just go ahead and do my pie, get that out the way. I'm doing laundry too, by the way. 350, heat up the oven. And I'll be back and we'll, the oven will be at 350. We'll go ahead and fill our pie up, uh, pie crust up with the blueberry. We'll go ahead and do the top, put the top on there and bake the pie. I'll be back. Okay guys, I decided to add mushrooms and I'm pressing in some garlic, about five cloves, okay? How to make uh, chocolate oil, that's that red oil. Yep. Let's look it up. Or, I sell them too, so let's go to my page and message me. Mix this in. With our zucchini over here. Alright. Got a mushroom there. Turn this heat. 
heat up. Let's taste. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Mix all that in there with the zucchini. So, for the pasta uh, Nerano, you need uh, provolone and Parmesan or um, Pecorino Romano. I'm going to use Pecorino Romano. Okay. We're almost ready for our pie. This about has cooled down. So, I'll be right back. Our oven is at 350. We are ready to finish our pie. to the crust. So, I'm going to lay this on pie crust and bring you around. Okay, and now we're going to tuck under. Now, little holes is okay, guys, because the pie has to breathe. Okay, the, the fruit has to be able to sizzle out of somewhere, the steam from it. So it's okay. Okay, now just crimp your edges. Sealing. Put some sugar on this.
We're getting ready to put that in the oven, but first. So that the edges don't get done before the rest of the pie. going in the oven. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to check it after 30. We'll go from there. I'll be back. Okay, everyone, as you can see, I have the same pan that I did the zucchini in, the mushrooms in with the garlic. And now what we're going to do is we're going to finish the base of this. We're going to turn on our pasta water, which I need to put some more in. It's not nearly enough. And to this, we're going to add a tablespoon of rock salt. See that? That's rock salt. So we want a tablespoon. that in the water Just put a little bit more in the water okay now wait for that to boil Before we put in our spaghetti, in the meantime over here we're going to make the sauce. So we put that heat on. Now here's the thing, I don't have fresh basil leaves, so I'm going to put in some olive oil, just enough to cover the bottom. Okay. Two our mushrooms and zucchini. We're going to add some basil. Because I don't have fresh, I'm putting in chopped basil flakes. It's already got the pressed garlic in there, so we're going to put in. zucchini and mushrooms and garlic and I'm going to try to pick up that roof from the bottom okay minutes on the pie. The water's just about to boil. Go ahead and get my pasta. I have a pound of pasta. This will feed help serve for a few days. I'll bring you back once this boils and we go on with it. Okay, so after getting all the roof from the bottom, I put it in a bigger pan because don't forget we have to add the spaghetti. We're going to get our pecorino romano cheese. Got a pound of pasta, so I'm going to put a cup of that. The provolone. And pasta water. Oh, you should be done. Okay, she's boiling now. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my pasta in. Mm -hmm. You 
gotta submerge your pasta for it to cook simultaneously on both ends. You have the whole noodle, not just half and half. Alright, so 11 minutes for the pasta. should be ready and then we'll combine the two and we'll move on I'll be back okay it's been 11 minutes which means the pasta should be done okay some of this pasta water a half cup I'll put this on a four some Pecorino Romano. I'm going to put two serving spoons full of Pecorino Romano. Okay. I'll stir that around. But you see how it's making a nice creamy sauce on the bottom almost milky see You get all your pasta in there. to come in with our provolone cheese about a cup eight ounces about something good that is delicious absolutely delicious oh yeah and the mushrooms gives it that added mm, it most certainly does and I sprinkle a little bit of corino Cover this up. This is dinner, and that is done. So, the only thing left to do, and it's 2.07, and I've been doing my chores now, and I've been doing laundry and stuff, and feeding the dog, and all of that. Been outside uh, looking at, at the plants and stuff, and 
The only thing left to do is just grill these steaks and they don't take not but a few minutes, about 10 minutes. So that's it. Oh, and the bread, of course, that'll be at the end. It is doing a little rise. So, I'll go ahead and get that going and I'll bring you back. I gotta clean up my mess now. Okay, now it's time to shape our bread. Okay. Uh, so I had to put the pie in for an additional 20 minutes. So now that's made, that's making it an hour and 10 minutes. After that's done, I'm gonna take the uh, silicone pie edge uh, off and bake it for an additional five. And that should do it. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and shape our bread because that's what's going in next. Okay, here's our dough. This one, like I said, let me wet my fingers. Is going to be a loaf, a free loaf. What is it? Freestyle loaf. Go ahead and roll it up. Edges. All right, more manageable that way. There's some oil on this side. Cover it up with towels. Okay, and right there on the stove. I'll be back. Okay. We're gonna remove the uh, ring. I'll show you. Okay. Very hot, so have a little pot of cool water, and there it is. All right, so five minutes. Actually, I'm gonna do ten. So this pie takes one hour and twenty minutes to bake at three fifty. Okay. And I have my bread proofing there. Once the pie comes out, 
I'm gonna raise that to four uh, twenty-five or four hundred. Third, bake the bread for thirty-five minutes. Okie dokie. So I'll bring you back in about nine minutes. All right. Let's take this pie out. All right. Let's take this pie out of here. Beautiful pie. Oh, yes. You think I put too many blueberries? <laughs> like three cans because the the fresh blueberries was about a can of 50 ounces look at that oh my I can't wait to dig in tonight to that I am having a piece of this Ooh -wee. blueberry pie sugar topping take a picture all right so the pie is out and done so now we're going to raise this to uh, 400. I'm gonna let that get up there. It is now three o'clock. Now mind you, I've not been at this stove since 11.23. I've been doing other things, okay? Like I said, I got my house chores done, got the dog fed, I'm doing the laundry, and uh, Puffs' jeans, always jeans, you know, work jeans. He's a big guy, and those jeans are long and thick, I tell you. But uh, they take two cycles in the dryer to dry. So that, I always do those first to get it out the way, because it delays me. It really does big goof <laughs> just kidding <laughs> okay so I'll be back um, as soon as uh, the oven heats up to 400 okay time to put the bread in I'm putting it right on the piece of stone and the oven is set to 400 I'm gonna put some water at the bottom <coughs> My, at the bottom of the oven, I have a metal, a metal pie plate, you know, the pie crust comes in. You can also buy them just by itself. But, uh, put some water in there. So now, set this for 30 minutes. Then we'll unravel it and cook it for additional five and you should be fine. I'll be back. Okay, well, everyone, after uh, 40 minutes in the oven, our bread is done. See? So, we'll slice it diagonally once it cools off, and we'll serve it with our meal. I'm going to put it on the rack. Conversation. There she is. What a beauty. There's the pie. There's the um, spaghetti al nerano. And there she is. What a beauty. Yep. That be her. So we'll let her cool off. She's very hot. And um, I'll slice her and put her in a bread basket to serve for dinner tonight. I'll be back when it's time to do the steaks. It is 3.53, 3.54 now. I'll go ahead and sear the steak and then just let it rest. And when he comes in and get his shower, then I will continue to cook it. You know, I'll just leave it on low. And by the time he gets dressed and all that stuff and... 
rests a little bit, and then he, he usually rests for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Then he'll get up and he'll uh, serve himself, you know. But I got to watch him because sometimes he has a heavy hand with serving himself. <laughs> but uh, then the meat should be tender by then. So that's my plan, and I'm sticking to it because it works. In the meantime, in between time, I'm going to get on with my lovely day. I'm going to think I'm going to take a stroll out back and just check out the beautiful uh, trees and garden and, and check up on the work the Huffster has been doing and see where we're left off at. But uh, I'll be back, folks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed with grilling my steak. So, uh, in here... We want some olive oil, a generous amount, we're putting the rest of this in, okay. Get your marsala or red wine ready, we're going to put in a splash of that. We're going to put in some garlic cloves, about four would do. Okay, we're going to need some butter. Butter. I love that word. Butter. <laughs> I know I'm silly. All right. There's the butter. Like that. Okay, heat this up. We'll make some. Um, I'm going to mix. Some of that olive oil, a little bit of achote oil, okay, some boto, okay, it's about three tablespoons of butter. Yep. Get nice and hot. So we're going to sear this. And then we're going to flip it to the other end. I might just leave it in there. And uh, let it saute, slow cook. And, I mean, I'm going to put it on low, low because... Ain't no telling when Hofstra's going to come in. He's not coming yet, so I just thought I'd better go ahead because I feel it coming on. <laughs> so make sure your butter gets everywhere. Okay. That's enough of that. It'd be nice if the butter dishes had two little handles at the end, you know. Alright. Let's go ahead and close this up a minute. Let that get I like that click to let you know it's nice and tight. Officer came in, had his protein shake. He just leaves everything out. Tell you how we met. It was funny. Oh, um, both coming out of relationships and uh, didn't know each other at all. And uh, one day, I this was five, let's see, five, five years ago. Uh, one day, I decided to separate myself from everything and everybody I knew, not just drop them, you know, still friendly, just no longer. Uh, you know, going out and doing gatherings and stuff like that, but keeping up with everybody on Facebook and calling, and stuff like that, texting, um, and visiting here and there, but nothing like hanging out. So I decided to separate myself because I was tired. I was like, Lord, 
I said this, I just felt this shift, this jolt, not a shift, a jolt. The shift came later. <laughs> I felt this jolt in my heart to do this. And I went to a different town, got me an apartment, a nice two bedroom apartment. It was actually a two car garage that sat behind in the alley behind the house. And from the house to the garage, there was a nice little uh, like picnic area, patio area, flat ground. And then they had a little gardening area by the fence and little trees here and there. It was beautiful, it was a majestic, I'll see if I can find a picture of it. The house had, um, it was like a loft. Like I said, two car garage. And uh, when you come in from the alley and you pulled in with your car, you lock the door and you're in the laundry uh, utility um, where you put your wash and dryer and stuff. Anyway, so then you go, there's the front door, and then you go up the steps to the second floor, and that was, it was like a loft, two bedroom loft. It had no shower, it had an old fashioned really long and deep bathtub you know like what do they call that eagle claw bathtub i don't know what they call it. oh it was beautiful it was majestic it seriously was i enjoyed every bit of it anyway so i moved in there and uh just started to be on my own living every day on my own without a lot of noise. I'd, then all of a sudden I had my friend lent me his radio. And I went ahead and the only thing that would come in was a Christian station, pretty much. Everything else was static because the radio had a broken antenna, so it had a hanger. But I didn't have a TV. I didn't have any of that. Um, I had to get those things gradually, replace them. And because I had been through a fire and lost everything, I was staying with a friend and then I moved in with another friend. That didn't work out, so then I moved into this apartment. Anyway, and by friend I meant girlfriend, you know, from where I moved from to this apartment. Uh, just a, a girl that I had known for a long time. That was a big mistake. I didn't realize her lifestyle. Um, yeah, was that to the, was that distant from mine? But anyway, um, I got the apartment and I started listening to the uh, Christian radio. That In that apartment is where I surrendered myself to God and don't ever let me forget to tell you guys about uh, God's trash can my story regarding God's trash can if I haven't already I can't remember so anyway to find stuff to do isn't that beautiful here to find stuff to do I had known a gentleman by the name of Cowan, and he was, he founded um, Kentucky Pro Bass Warrior. He does a lot of tournaments, fishing tournaments. So he does these free fishing, monthly, uh, he did, he, he gave it up now. Um, he did these uh, fishing trips once a month for veterans, active soldiers, um, and their families, you know what I mean? And he would have people that would sponsor, that had boats that would come and take us out. So I decided to give it a try. And uh, that's where I met David, on one of those fishing trips. Um, we happened to get on a boat with one of his buddies that was uh, a 
pontoon. Jeff was his buddy's name. Hey Jeff, if you're watching. Anyway, so I met him on August 13 of 2016 on this fishing trip. And it was funny. I could tell you the story. You should see he was just tripping all over himself. We exchanged numbers when we were leaving. And uh, I really wasn't interested, but check this out. I had prayed to God. I said, you know what, Father? I've been picking men of my choosing all my life, and none of it has ever worked. None of it. Because they weren't blessed by him. There wasn't someone that he found that I was compatible with, I guess. So I told him, I said, well, now I'm going to leave it up to you. You choose the right man for me because I know you'll choose well. You know me better than I know myself. So you know who to choose for me and that I will be pleased. Well, and that was around the end of July. Well, here comes August 13th. We decide, my mom and I decide to go ahead and sign up for uh, the trip. And I'm going to put my basil. And I met David, so we exchanged number. I forgot all about him. And mom and I were just looking forward to the next uh, two trips before the season ended on fishing. Yeah, because of winter. But anyway, Karu, they also have free tickets to like baseball games and uh, we're looking at Louisville Bats and football games, you know, that, that these teams donate to veterans and military. So, Karu had uh, tickets to a Louisville Bats baseball game on the, for August 27th, which is my uh, second son's, uh, my middle son's uh, birthday, by the way. And so, he called me and he said, uh, Mama didn't want to go. I was going to ask for some tickets, but Mama didn't want to go, so I just forgot about it. Well, then he calls. And he says, are you going to go to the next trip and blah, blah, blah. He's talking about all that stuff and, and talking about the trip we had shared, you know. And uh, so I told him, I said, we talked that. I said, so I said goodbye. He says goodbye. He calls right back. He said, you know, I wasn't finished with the conversation. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I thought you just wanted to know about the, the next trip. And uh, he said, no, I really want to talk to you. He said, I got some tickets to the Louisville Bats game on August 27th. Would you like to go? I said, I was just asking my mom, and she didn't want to go. Yeah, I'll go. And that was it. Then from there, we went on um, to a um, Cardinal game, football game. And it was cold. That was in October or November or something. I think it was October. It was really freezing cold, but we went up there and we did it. And um, then after that, all right. So now I'm going to turn this off and let this rest. So first, I'm going to put some wine, some red wine, and then uh, that was in October, I think. Take that off the heat, let that simmer a little bit, let it uh, get, let it rest and get all its juices back. But anyways, my year lease would have been up on December 18th of 2016, and I was going to renew it, but uh, that's when he said no, he said why don't you just move in with me. I was like, um, and I had prayed over it, and um, I was like, well, where would this be leading to? Because I'm looking for my forever. And um, 
I said, I'm done messing around with, you know, people who aren't serious about commitment or relationships. And that's what I've been looking for. You know, just not picking the right people. But I was straight up with him. And he told me, he said, I'm looking for the same thing. I said, well, with the promise to put a ring on it. Uh, I'm going to take your word for us, the man you claim to be, and the man of God, which he was. Uh, I still is. Um, I said, and I'll say yes to that. So I did renew my lease, and we started packing, right? This is in October now. <laughs> we started, you know, a little bit at a time packing stuff over and merging things together, you know, and, and getting rid of some of his stuff, getting rid of some of my stuff, and just this and that, and, you know, talking it out and agreeing to why it stays and what goes, which was beautiful because we kind of almost thought exactly the same way. And everything just, I, it was just smooth sailing as far as the uh, merger went. I uh, gave Mama my bed and just gave most of my stuff away because he, he was renting this house when I met him. So it was fully furnished with um, giant people furniture. <laughs> I had to change that. But uh, anyway. It really was giant people furniture. I mean, it just crowded the whole house. But anyway, uh, so I gave away most of my stuff that I didn't need. I felt in my heart that confident. I really did. I never felt that confident about merging with a, another, with a man, another soul, like for for everything. I never felt. I mean, it just felt right. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, so come to find out that when we met, he had just separated from his wife the year or two years before. And when we met, and he still had three kids he was taking care of that was coming over on every other weekend or so, I think. Uh, but when we met, he told me, he said he had just prayed to God, not just at the moment, but he had just recently been praying to God to choose a mate for him, a forever, you know, a wife for him. And then we met. And he said and he knew it instantly. Isn't that something? God puts it in your heart and you know I mean, there's some, you could try to peek around the corner here and around and above and below it, underneath it and see, see, you know, but no, you can't, you're blind, you're blind. It's like, it's a brick wall, it's, this is it, you know? <laughs> so uh, we've been together ever since and it's been an amazing five years. And of course we have ups and downs, of course we have arguments, but you know what is beautiful about uh, having Yeshua HaMashiach as your headship, as your covering, is that he puts it in your heart immediately to make amends and to look at the other person's point of view and to look within yourself and your actions. So that's when I decided to start my journey on be more proactive instead of reactive. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, that, and that just came to me. I, th I felt I was led by the Holy Spirit to think of it that way because that works for me now. Oh, I'm not there yet. But every day I'm striving and every day I'm getting better. And I'm a lot better today than I was five years ago when he met me. <laughs> i tell you that. Mm hmm So that's the story of Huffs and I. And he's, of course, he's a retired uh, Sergeant First Class, United States Army. And um, I'm a veteran myself of United States Army. My sons are. And uh, United States Army, my family, my uncles, my cousins, you name them. I mean, and his whole family. This military, his whole family. His dad was, his mom was, his sisters are, uh, his brothers are. Uh, 
not all the brothers there. There are eight of them. And um, there were eight of us, too, in my family. So that was something. But, yeah, that's how we met. And I tell you what, uh, we have both equally been blessed um, individually and collectively. And that's kind of like a confirmation from God letting us know you're on the right path. That's how we feel. Anyway, so we're going to let this uh, steak, flank, flat iron, flank, whatever, steak, rest. And then when he comes in, and it's resting in the marination of the wine and the garlic and the butter and the oils and all that goodness, seasoning. And when he comes in and goes to take a shower, I'll go ahead and put it on low. As a matter of fact, I'll start around 5 o'clock because I know he'll be coming in around that time. It's 4.18 now. so. But I'm going to get on and finish my laundry and I'll see you all later. Hi, everyone. So a hamster came in a little bit early. It's only about 4.40. So I went ahead and put some water in the pan and put it on put it to number four. He's getting ready to jump in the shower, he'll probably take a nap. And then when he wakes up, he'll have dinner. Plenty of time for this meat to get soft. It's already been marinating overnight. Sitting out, it got room temperature, enough time to relax. And then a quick sear fry on both sides and relax again. So there shouldn't be any problems with getting a nice tender steak. This is the bread. Got it all buttered up. It finally cooled down, so I took the tail end of it. I always do this. You gotta taste what you're cooking. <laughs> Cooks always get to taste first. <laughs> That's the best part. After sweating over that stove, right? Hmm. Anyway, this is the bread, and it's absolutely delicious. I like the real crispy part, the ends. I love it. I love that crunch. I'm always been, I've always been a crunch person. But anyway, this is my routine. Now, it's not every day because I don't have to, like, if I make a pie today, that lasts all week. So I don't have to make a pie every day or cake every day. Now, when I was making cakes like every day or stuff, videos every day and with cakes, those were going to work, to his work. He was sharing it with his co-workers, you know. Uh, but I don't have to cook like this every day, but most, like maybe three, three times a week, I would say, because leftovers, right? So... But sometimes he'll have two different types of food uh, left over, and I'll feel like something else. And I'll get in there, and I'll do another one anyway. You know, but nothing ever goes to waste. Trust that. I wanted to film a video to show you all how I get done a complete meal from fresh bread and salads to desserts. You know, to main courses to desserts. So it is doable, folks. It is possible. Um, and again, if you're uh, one of those people who are short on time, you know, prep ahead. Prep the day before, the night before. It helps, you know. Like after dinner and after the laundry, which I'm almost done, um, I'll probably rest for a little bit, and then I'll go and I'll do dialysis. You know, I have to draw some blood samples today and have them take it to the la to the uh, clinic first thing in the morning, drop it off so they can ship it to the lab. But anyway, so I just wanted to show you all what pretty much three times of a week what a typical day is for me. And I enjoy every bit of it, every bit of it. And I still have time to go out on the deck, still have time to swim still have time to garden and just go sometimes I have time on my hands imagine that 
<laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's doable is what I'm saying, folks. Just don't panic. Prep ahead. Think it out. You know, make a plan. It'll work. All right, so, anyway, until the next time, you all, God bless you. Take care of yourselves and one another. Love one another. Care for one another. And um, I pray God's grace upon grace upon you and his beauty for your ashes. Indeed. Until the next one. Bye. Surely didn't take him time to change and get this ground going. This is where the shed used to be. And uh, preparing to fence all this. And as high as that pole is, that's how high the fence is going to be. We've already got some bushes and trees over there blocking that that oak should grow fast we have this one right here that just appeared out of nowhere and that's something but boy it sure is hot out here i want to get in the pool so he's going to go ahead and fix this ground and uh hopefully we'll be able to have our feast of tabernacles tent on this side since the shed is on the other side I'm not getting the pool Woo. he went ahead and pressure washed the shed looks pretty good Getting in the pool. I'm gonna get boots and we're gonna go in the pool. It's hot in